Absolutely. Yes. There are times where we can sit back and look at life the way that Natasha just wrote in the chat. There are times where we can say that people will sit back and try to overwhelm us and dumb themselves all the way down in order to be on top of us, just so they can get ahead, so they can be the one on top, just so that they can say, I'm capable of doing what I'm doing, and this is how I'm going to do it. No matter if they're degrading themselves, no matter if they're putting themselves on front street to be embarrassed and to be judged. And it's just so weird how some people can take the level of that two minutes of fame and devour everything in its path in order to just get that attention. So, Natasha, you're absolutely right. Now, Kennedy, one thing I also want you to recognize in your statement when you responded back, when you take the relationship of Scar and um, Mufasa from The Lion King, and you can sit back and you can see how the level of jealousy and envy and hatred just because someone was given the accolade to be who they were for their family. And you can take that theory and you can see how the hatred reveals itself at a time when you think someone should be there to help you. When someone should be there to give you that hand up, you know, to help you, just pull you up. When you're falling off the cliff, most people will give you, they'll, they'll stab the jaggers. They'll stab the jaggers in your hand to prevent you from being succe successful in that position. And that's a really sad story. You know, you take Cain and Abel in the Bible. That's more of a biblical text. A lot of people, you know what I'm saying? They're not as into that as they are into, you know, cartoons and characters and different things like that. But those Revelations are true. They're absolutely true. And it's scary. It's scary. This world has us bombarded. I mean, let's not even talk about relationships. When most women, most women who are side pieces in that position try to defame the character of the main woman just to be the main woman to get eventually cheated on as well. You know? <laughs> Corey, right, right. What is going on in this world? What is happening? It is crazy. It is crazy. Let me see. Who else had a good point here? Give me one second. Let me find another good point here. Let's see. There's going to be times where people are going to just promote you or help you to promote you just to see what it what's taking place. Who's going to be in your corner just to see if they have what it takes, you know, just to see if they're going to be able to say that, oh, I was there when it all came down, when it all boiled down to it. I was the one in your corner now, how much do you owe? How much does a person owe someone who was supposed to be there for them? Do they constantly feel that they owe them their lives? You know, these are things we got to think about. And welcome to Chronicles of a Nonprofit, episode 89. We are in the house November the 29th, moving into December. Mm-hmm. You are listening to the pre-recorded podcast of a segment that took place on our live chat, our private live chat. And I think that this is important to just share with people what type of world we're living in today, how people are, and what people will go through in order to dumb you down, to make you feel as though you're not worthy of something that you have an opportunity to do 
You know, a lot of people don't have competitors. A lot of times I remember, I remember Kennedy a time when competition was the main ingredient to life. And it was in junior high and high school. And that was the worst time because it did not pull out creativity. It only made people excel to the degree of someone else's creativity. And what area was it in? Football, choir, um, you know, the home king and home queen status. If you weren't that, then you weren't it. Wow. And then you sit back and look at where these people have gone. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Where are they? Why did why didn't they continue to excel after all of the com competition was over? You know, I mean, I, I don't know where any of those people are from my high school years. You know, I barely see it, hardly anyone. And it's always been that way because I was never in the clique of everybody. I had my few friends and my few people that I communicated with on a regular basis, high and by, and I kept it moving. And that's what we need to do, entrepreneurs. We need to learn how to recognize that even sometimes our own family members can be that scar that can put, put the daggers into our hands while we're on the edge of the cliff holding ourselves up because they don't want to see us rise. Horrible. It's horrible. But you know, we have the elevation to discern who we need to be around, who makes us feel happy, who makes us feel successful. That road to success is going to lead to many pathways. We're going to meet lots and lots and lots of people. And in these people, based upon the way that they treat us, is going to be the determinant factor of what we should never ignore. We should never ignore how negative a person can be. Because if they're negative to someone else, they're definitely negative to you. And that's something I want you to pay attention to because that negativity can be the very thing that is the result of a, a different circumstance or situation that befalls us and we don't need that. We don't even need the situation to show us anything. All we needed to do was to be triggered by the effect that the individual in question whether they should have been a part of our lives or not. That was the only lesson we were supposed to learn. And because we didn't, everything else that comes with it after that is the key ingredient to why we don't excel successfully. We don't excel in our business. We don't excel because this person is spending too much time talking and not actively working. And we got to be mindful of that the distractors and how these distractors come in to distract our mission. Why, Kennedy? Because they already know that we are specifically there. And you'll learn this. You're only 26. Why they're continually there to distract us from our goals. And sometimes, Kennedy, even we ourselves are the ones that put these people these manifested people in our way to distract us so we can blame them. You know, there was a time I used the blame game all the time. Oh, I can't do it because, uh, the, uh, you know, this or that. And it was only me. It, it was me deciding that I just didn't want to do it. You know, how many times have we taken off from work as employees and called in sick because we had some sick days and we just didn't feel like going? And so we chose to just say, oh, I'm sick or my child is sick. We're putting all type of, of negative manifestations upon ourselves and our lives. We got we to gotta pay attention to that instead of just calling in, I want a sick day. You know? And if I need a doctor's excuse, then I'll go to the doctor. But other than that, you know, I need a sick day. And if I have a sick day and I deserve a sick day and this sick day is on my record, then you have no reason to ask me why I need it. I just do. And that's what we learn as, as more mature entrepreneurs. We learn that we don't have to be so explanatory. 
in our decisions and things that we do in our lives. We just don't have to explain everything. And that's as we mature. And I'm learning that now. You know, I'm genuinely learning that right now. Because I always felt that, oh, I can't just tell someone, no, I need to give them an explanation. And as an entrepreneur, that is a waste of your time. When someone says it's over, I thank you, but no thank you. Welcome that and thank them because that would have been hell on wheels had it have been a different way because you didn't see the signs, you didn't see the symbols, or possibly you did. You just wanted something. You know, you look at employees, you know, you know they're not a good fit for you, but because you need a body in the building, you go ahead and hire them anyway. Don't be offended when the situations turn themselves around. We can't be offended. Why? Because that is part of the general makeup of discernment. We understand that in this discerning time, and these are for my young entrepreneurs, the discerning of time is so vital because as you look to your elders, you need to make sure that these elders are giving you the best advice. You need to make sure that these elders are not giving you the advice that works for them. Remember what I always say. The only thing an alcoholic can do is give you an alcohol alcohol or a alcoholic uh, angry perspective. Sometimes they tell the truth, but they tell it in a way that psychologically they could never say it in the sober mind. So is that really them or is it the spirit of the alcohol? So we're moving into a different time right now. We're moving to a time and an age where even drugs are legal. So we're going to have to be discerning of who we connect and tie our lives with. This is the way that the game went in the matrix. It went from the red pill to the blue pill. Now that consciousness is here, now we're going to flip it and say, instead of the red pill or the blue pill, we're going to say, do you take the blue pill or the red pill? It's still the pills, but no one tends to understand. No one tends to reach out to the reality that all of this is all matrixed. It's all socialized. It's inbred in us, you know, and, and a lot of people try to put fear into laws and legalities and, you know, to, to just deter people. They would rather see them sit there and do nothing with their lives out of fear than to elevate themselves and to progress in better ways. But we know better as entrepreneurs that these are the highs and lows in the business and we just got to do what we got to do and keep it moving. Keep it moving as long as you're doing the passionate work from your heart and this is helping a society and you see it helping. Let these haters hate on. Let them hate on because they have nothing. They have nothing. And they want us to have nothing. And why should we have nothing when the world is infinite? The universe is abundant. It's, it's, it's flourishing and thriving and everyone is doing what they want to do. They literally are doing what they want to do, even if, if it is at their lowest perspective. If it is just that they're getting some type of gratification to see someone suffer, they're still getting something. And it's a sick way to look at life. But if they can do it and, and, and have all that hate and, you know, market all this destruction, then we, as entrepreneurs, moving into the, the benefit of what we want our future goals and our future, uh, future to be, our future success to be, we're allowed to go in it, go forward without being fearful especially if we're helping others. And I'm talking about legitimately helping others. And this world has been so conditioned to think on one hand, oh Lord, it's like the majority of society will believe a lie before they believe the truth, the reality of it. And this is how the game works. But how are we going to maintain this game? How are we going to do it, entrepreneurs? Mm -hmm. 
Let's get some points out there. Carl, you said it. You said something profound. You said something profound. Believe in you. Just know that you have the capabilities to believe in what it is you desire. And don't worry about the fear. You're absolutely right, Carl. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Dennis is saying, believe in God and just hold true to the fact that no matter what weapons are formed against you, all will be for the benefit of your good. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mark. Awesome. Yes. Yes, that's true. People may show you who they are and sometimes it's too late before you see it. But but we know. We do know. And, and we recognize that. And in knowing and recognizing it, we do better. We definitely do better. You know? So that's what I want to talk about today. The, the revelation of how far does our discernment protect us? How far do we need to mindfully pay attention to what we should be discerning in our lives before it destructs our lives? There is a destruction that will take place if we're not paying attention to the discerning factors of things that motivate us that we should be focused on, but we're distracted from. And if we don't get it the first time, we'll definitely get it. And we just got to know how to play this matrix game the way that suits us to where we know that anything can be a law. Anything can be turned and misconstrued into something illegal. Anything. Like I told you, driving down the street at 37 miles an hour is it a trap to even have a vehicle and have speed limits that, you know, that's that close? Because <laughs> if you are at 37 miles an hour, don't go down in an area where, you know, there's a school zone and you're not doing 20 or under. Now we have surveillance that will ticket your license. And that license will get a ticket in the mail. You don't didn't even you you can't even go in to test it. You know what I mean? So basically, we have to be mindful, entrepreneurs of everything, even all the way down to children. When children, you know, use and misuse the opportunity of love that parents have for them, and how they choose not to face the reality in whatever their situations are. You know, we can use whatever example we want to plug in here. But as entrepreneurs and as leaders of our own, our own family structure, we need to hold accountable those people who we have been discerned, children or no. Someone wrote a post the other day. on Facebook about I can't see my kids struggle and I feel so bad for those parents who always say oh well you got to go find another way where well, you want your kids to be babies forever and then when it's time for you to grow old and you're rocking in your rocking chair you're so used to being the one that has to provide them with everything that they'll never even call you to see how you're doing. You know, these kids in today's millennial world are very, very different. Some still have the ability to be the, their greatest version, but others have just given up. They've dumbed themselves down. And so we can't be offended by that. We just have to be knowledgeable that it is what it is. And this is how it works. This is the system. Do you take the blue pill or the red pill? Or do you take the red pill or the blue pill? <laughs> you know, so that's something I want you to think about, entrepreneurs. I thank you so much for being a part of this podcast. I will be posting parts of the podcast onto my YouTube channel. So I will be introducing this to my Chronicles of a Nonprofit 
here at um, Dr. Darina Shine TV on YouTube. But for now, I want you to just realize that don't allow anyone to shut you down, to shut your mouth from the belief of what you know to be true, because they can sometimes shatter your whole perspective to where you ask yourself the truthful question, is that really true when you knew it was? Is it really green? Is it really raining outside? Or is it sun shining? Like, you got to be so mindful. There's so many tricksters out here and so many reasons for the trick, you know, to get people to just continue to dumb themselves down. And that's not what we need in our community. That's not what we need in our world. We need more vibrant individuals. And then sometimes it's just the location because you go somewhere else, someone's ready and willing for the help willing for the success, willing for the, the determination to help themselves because it's not normal. They don't hear it a lot. And that's what it is. And don't let everybody know your next moves because guess what? As soon as you go do that, they've already came and tore down the rich soil and put poison in it. So no matter how rich it looks, it's going to eventually once it's turned over, it's going to kill any seeds that's ha that has been planted. And that's so sad. And so for those who are killing the plants, for those who are killing the seeds before it's even laid down, know this, your time will come. Your time will come and you yourself will feel the energy of what you've put out there. So the power of manifestation is great, is strong. So entrepreneurs keep believing in you. Keep rocking and walking in the shoes you're rocking. Keep doing it. You know, they need to have rocking, rocking shoes. <laughs> you know, shoes that look like rocking chairs. You could just stop and just, I think they do. They, they call them hoverboards. <laughs> so yeah, it's, 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 it's so amazing. Life is genuinely amazing. And these podcasts will be used for my children when they need to sit back and think, did she tell me that? Oh, she told me something. Like Life Jennings always says in his song, uh, I was my grandmother was talking about something about a fisherman, but I wasn't listening. That stuck to me because it's like you always listen. That was a discerning conversation that I received from a, a from a song, from someone who had experience, you know, you can talk about something. I'm not even paying attention, but I know it was something about fishermen. And all she was saying is teach a man how to fish. He'll eat forever. But if you continue to give him the fish, he will not eat except for every time you feed him. You know, and that's what I want everyone to understand. And I'm sure we have that mentality because as entrepreneurs, we have to have been taught that. Thank you so much. And we'll see you next time.